Recording. We are recording. Cool. So welcome to everyone who who is jumping on. Um, we've got Cal. We've got Tuiana. Awesome. Welcome awesome. to everyone jumping on. Welcome to everyone watching the recording. So cool to have you here. We are we're super excited to give this to deliver this to you guys. Just be adding value and be you know sharing some of our own experiences and. It's really about just having fun, talking about cool shit, adding value to you guys, and talking about something very exciting at the end. That's it. I don't have to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is that. And, like, we, we've been talking all week about it. I know since coming back from Peru, like, how can we make a bigger difference? And it is adding more value. Um, but more importantly for, I think, the people who value it too, like, I know you guys, and there's been so many people watching the recording of our stuff too, and it's been very interactive through Messenger and that. Um, that's where we want to make the impact to to you guys who actually want to make a difference in your own lives. I think that's um, a, a big thing. That's why we're rolling this one out tonight again. Yeah, yeah. So we are <laughs> we are going to share some exciting stuff at the end. It's going to be some exciting stuff through. It depends what you see as exciting. Um, we're going to do a training, which is yeah. pretty cool. Um, and a lot of it you look at it, like I say, we have a bit of fun with this stuff too because people hear training and they're like, uh, do this, if, but, but if you if you're attracted to jump on this webinar then i'm sure we we will find the same kind of stuff exciting exactly yes does improving your life sound exciting yes it does well, that's what this is about <laughs> this is what it's all about yeah. awesome yeah so just um everyone who's jumping on just let us know like there is a little chat box down the bottom that you can ask us questions through yeah um and we will get we will get to them but obviously we're not going to be answering straight away because a lot of questions come through and we can't continuously um be interrupting what we're talking about so yeah but apart from that apart from that do you want to get the ball rolling apparently I'm you've got yeah apparently yeah. i'm starting apparently she would have taken over anyway but i thought <laughs> i'll just i'll just let her go first and i think like i say we um Lady, all, ladies first, ladies right? beautiful ladies first I know. Compliments there. <laughs> Thank you. <All> right. <laughs> I'm just going to kick back and let her roll. And there is actually so much. <laughs> At first I was like, oh, what are we going to talk about? And then I was like, shit, there's actually so much I want to talk about. Once I started, so the challenge is to really fit this into my kind of, into about 20, 30 minutes. Otherwise this is going to end up being over, over an hour. And um, we value your time, we value ours, you know. It is a Friday night, understand. People want to go out and have fun, go partying. Oh, I want to yeah, meet up yeah. with my friends after, so. <laughs> Dave's sick, so he wants to go to bed. He's sick, I just, just want to go to bed. <laughs> you had a bit of a tickle. I have, yes, I've had a tickle. Yeah. And a sniffle. Yeah. Aww, she should be staying home to look after me. She should. <laughs> Well, you, we see this is this is what happens, guys. This is what happens. We have a bit of fun with this sort of stuff. Like Tequila will fix that shot. Yeah, no. <laughs> we're, not, we're not drinking. No, no, no. Seri and seriously though, like all I need to do is hang around like drunk people, my friends, a big group of people, and like tap into the energy, and I'll become the loudest one. And oh yeah. People are like, "What are you drinking? Give me some." I'm like, "I'm just drinking water." Last night was a prime <laughs> example. <laughs> yeah, we went out to dinner last night, and I was like. <laughs> and I was like, we're only going for an hour. That's that. I'm exhausted. Two hours later. <laughs> I'm like, blah, 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 blah. I'm sitting there like, mm -hmm. do you want to go? I'm like, mm -hmm. Making jokes mm -hmm. in front of the whole table. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. Okay. You're, in, you're in a good mood now to talk about a lot of this stuff, which is cool. Like, it's um, pretty serious stuff when it comes to personal growth and development. You've got to, you've got to get vulnerable. You've got to, you've got to be lighthearted with it and not take exactly. it too seriously. Exactly. Well, I think we've both been caught up being serious with a lot of this and we get emotional. We all get emotional guys. And I think yeah. the point we want to share too, is it's okay um, to be emotional, to go there. Cause you've got to work on this stuff. And you've got to go there to process it. You do. You go, And you've got to allow it too. You've got to allow it to come up and however it is like, or like yesterday at the airport, I had anger come up. And I'm like, well, I've just got to allow it. I wasn't happy. She wasn't happy. But I'm like, where's this come from? All right, it's happened. So be it. What can I learn from that little instance? It's like stuff from the past, whatever it is, a build up. I know about it. It's okay. It's not like you dickhead, you whatever, and you get into like really being negative against yourself. And I think that's a lot, a lot of stuff that I've had to work on myself as being more, more kind to myself, I think you would say. In times when emotions come up, 
compassionate. Yeah. Yourself. Yeah. That's it. Especially the people around me, more compassionate to me. <laughs> yeah. So I'll let you roll. This is yeah. your section. I'm taking over. Yeah. I'm doing what you do normally. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, there's really been, um, what I've been kind of picking up on, there's really been an energy lately of, because I'm like very in, like sensitive and in tune with um, energy, like I really feel into things. And so I've noticed what's been coming up the past few days is like um, a lot of kind of like tension and anxiety. So for you guys who are on now, like let me know, have you guys been at all in the past few days felt kind of like anxious or like anxiety or like pressure building almost maybe even pain um in your lower back because it's all connected to root chakra um you know and you're not really sure like what's going on and all it really is you know is like when you're feeling that kind of stuff it's just energy in motion right emotion energy in motion and so what's going on is every stuff within you is trying to shift, right? Old ways of being, old ways of thinking, maybe old beliefs that are not serving you anymore are trying to change or maybe old negative emotions that you've had, um, that you've been holding on to for many, many years are trying to be released now. Um, and so what happens though, because you know we're human, we freak out and we're like, shit. And especially a lot of us are in this pattern of keeping those deep, dark emotions suppressed, holding on to them because we're afraid of, of facing them and dealing with them. And so when we have that like anxiety, it's really just that that stuff's trying to come out and then our bodies are like, no, and it's trying to um, hold on to that still. But your body and your inner being is really saying, I want to let go of this stuff now and it's time to actually let go of this. So that's something, that's something that, that's been coming up recently. So I'm just going to check the comments, not to kill all folks there. <laughs> um, I've been around the wrong people for a while. I want to change, need to change. I haven't, haven't been with my family, my people for a very long time. Um, hence why I'm going to Sydney tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And that's something that you'll hear us talking about and every successful person talk about is environment like the people you're hanging around with is just so so important you absorb everything like at an unconscious level even if you're not aware of it so that's that's something that's that's super super important so i guess i'm going to start off with um with just really quick sharing a, a bit of my story um and so for the purpose of letting you guys know how I've kind of come to where I am now um, and what's kind of led me, led me down this path. Uh, so, so when I was really, really young, um, I was actually sexually abused by my father um, between, I don't know, the ages of five, five and seven. I don't really remember. Um, when I was about seven, he, he went to prison. Around that same time, my, my mother had a, um, a mental breakdown, like, full-on psychosis, schizophrenia. Um, and so I really grew up, you know, talking about suppressing emotions and things. I, I really grew up, like, from my earliest memories, just feeling like it was just me, and myself, and I. And I, um, you know, because the two people, my mum and dad, the people that are supposed to be there for you and protect you, simply were either not there for me, neglecting me, not able to be there for me, like my my beautiful mother um or were doing the opposite of loving and caring for me and actually abusing me being the ones that were hurting me the most and so that was um that was really very very painful but you know we <laughs> listening to tony robbins speak and i've been listening to him on youtube for about three years now but one of the things he he talked about recently, you know, because for those of you who don't know, we just saw him speak live um, in Sydney. Amazing. He is amazing. And he was just, one of the things he really, he talks about is, you know, if you're going to blame people for all, all the bad things in your life, then you've got to blame them for all the good stuff as well. And, you know, an example of this is like, 
when I was um, when I was nineteen, twenty, I was like suffering a lot. Like um, you know, people wanting to label me like I had depression or bipolar or you know that I needed medication or something. Like I was really really down, and I felt like. I did really blame it on my past. I blamed it on my father. I blamed it on my childhood. Like, you know, if all if he hadn't have done that to me, I wouldn't feel like this. But then, you know, I <laughs> after a few years of doing so much work, you know, after making the decision that, you know what, I'm not going to let this defeat me. I'm not going to let this um, overtake me. And I'm not going to be the victim of this. You know, I can do whatever the fuck I want in my life like fuck the past it doesn't it really doesn't matter and so by turning into the woman that I am today and being able to actually now help people through their own stuff and be someone who inspires people and to be someone who is in an amazing relationship and I live somewhere that I love and I'm doing a business that I absolutely love you know that's then I can say hey you know what rather than blaming my father and saying oh you're why my life is shit I say, well, you know what? I'm deeply grateful to everything that I experienced um, because it's turned me into the person that I am today. So that's just kind of a little example. But um, the place that I started my journey, you know, when I was 16, I moved to Indonesia just after my mum passed. And I came back when I was 19. And that's when I started digging into this. Um, you know, this work. And I, I really made a decision that, like I said before, you know what, I'm going to move forward in my life. I, I can't let this stop me. And, you know, if there's other people, other amazing, inspiring people in the world who have been through hell and back and they're now happy and successful, then why can't I? And so the, the biggest breakthrough for me, like I did a lot of different things, like going to therapy and thank God I said, I always said no to medication. Um, but I did a lot of different types of therapy and everything. But the huge breakthrough for me was around um, forgiveness. So when, when I actually, I went through some processes and I found um, a couple of amazing mentors. So you guys probably know them. They're very well known. So Louise Hay and Wayne Dyer, who I actually saw speak a few days before he passed. He's an amazing man. And he talked about, you know, he shared the story about how his father had walked out on him and his family, his mother and his siblings when he was very young. And for so many years of his life, he held onto this hatred until one day he visited his, his grave. He didn't even know that his father had died and he decided to release it. And he said, you know what, I'm actually so grateful for, um, for my father and, and everything that happened because he taught me one of the greatest lessons in my life. And that lesson is forgiveness. So you can kind of see how like every single thing that, that happens in your life, it happens for a reason. It really happens to teach you something. It's the sole purpose of us being here, like at a really deep level, like at a soul level, is to evolve is to grow and so everything that we go through is trying to teach us something that we need to know to not only grow but to actually fulfill our mission here in this lifetime because we're all here for a reason we all have a purpose and a mission and so once we can actually start to rather than looking at those those difficult things that happen in our lives and saying fuck why did they happen to me blah 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 blah, blah. it's ruined my life and we can say what did I actually have to learn from this and how can I heal from this how can I overcome this then that's when the magic starts to happen and that's when you start to live a much more enriched beautiful better quality of life you know a, a better life because you you're you're stepping into the person that you were you were born to be is this making sense yeah i'm just going to kick back here and learn more no nah, it's really really cool how you put it it's making heaps of sense okay so just yeah. let me um okay let me let me know guys if this is making sense 
Cool. All right. Awesome. <laughs> okay, cool. So there's actually so much I want to talk about. Talk about as much as you want. What, flow, does, flow. what does forgiveness mean? <laughs> flow, just let it roll. The more you have to talk, the less I have to talk to these guys, and I'm sure they're loving everything you're saying. <laughs> okay. Hmm. So I feel like I feel like there's a lot of a lot of miscon misconception around well, what actually is forgiveness? You know, what does it actually mean? Definitely making sense. Awesome. Thank cool. you. Who's that? Bell. Oh. Awesome, thank you. Um, so, you know, when I was like, when I was first starting out on this, and I was going to these therapy psychologists, like traditional psychologists and everything, I just really felt like I wasn't making any progress, and it was like they didn't really know what to do with me. It's like people were seriously lacking an understanding of all this stuff. Um, you know, like, especially with the labels that were trying to be placed on me, like the depression and all this stuff. And that was something I knew at a very deep level. It was like, even though I was in a lot of pain and it was, it was really difficult at the time, I just had this deep inner knowing, like, there's nothing fucking wrong with me. You know, it's just that I've been through some seriously painful stuff and I wasn't able to deal with it when I was a child because I had no one there for me and I wasn't strong enough then to deal with it. And so I know that this stuff is coming up now because I'm an, I'm an adult now and I'm actually strong enough to deal with this stuff. And I, I knew that the only thing was, and I, I also had the willingness to get better and improve my life and heal. The only thing was, is that I didn't know how to get there. I didn't know how to, how to overcome this stuff. Um, and you know, like even my, like even my sisters and stuff, you know, they love me and I love them, but they were just like, yeah, you know, good luck with mental illness. And they were looking up articles on like, <laughs> articles on mental illness. Like they, even the people who I love and who love me and my family, people who were so close to me, like they had no fucking idea, like how to help me or, you know, how to help me get through this stuff. So that's just what I want to channel a little bit now. It's like, what does forgiveness actually mean? Because I, like, I wish I had found this stuff sooner. So, like, I feel like a lot of people misunderstand forgiveness. So, you know, they think it's like, oh, but I'm not, I'm not going to forgive this person. You know, it's like someone does something to you and you're like, I'm never forgiving that person. Like, I'm never talking to them again. That's it. And you decide, like, for the rest of your life, you're going to hold this grudge against this person. And it's, it's fucked up because it almost makes you feel like you're being strong, you're being tough, you know, you're being righteous. You're, you know, you're inflicting justice somehow. <laughs> like, this is, this is the thing, though. It's something that's kind of fucked up in a lot of people's minds. Because the truth about forgiveness is all it really is, is deciding that I'm going to let go of what is no longer serving me. So one of my, one of my favorite quotes from Buddha is holding on to resentment. is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Right? So holding on to resentment or anger, bitterness, any of those feelings is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. So in other words, choosing to not forgive someone or a situation in your life all it is is holding on to poison in your system right there's another really cool um analogy that wayne dyer uses in save your life because it's still with snakes and you know he says he says it's like imagine you know when a snake bites you you don't buy from the bite you don't you don't buy, you don't die from the bite of the snake you don't die from the bite of the snake you die from the venom, right? The poison that is coursing through your veins long after that snake bit you. And that is exactly what not forgiving is. It's just choosing to hold on to poison within your system. So an example of this is, you know, when I was probably about, I don't know, 21 or 22 years old, I um I wanted to see my father again because I felt like I felt like you know if I see him again and he apologizes to me 
and he acknowledges what he's done to me is wrong, then I'll be able to move on to my life, right? I'm, I thought, you know, I'm stuck right now because, you know, I just have all this negativity, this so much anger and toxicity towards my father and I need him to apologize to me in order to move forward in my life. Um, but then what actually, <laughs> what I actually realized when I saw him and by the way, he did, he did apologize, but I realized that, so what? He said, sorry, and then what? It didn't mean that, so what, everything that happened in the past is suddenly taken away. And I, I realized in that moment that it wasn't, it wasn't about him saying sorry to me that was gonna change my life. It was me making the decision to forgive him that was gonna help me move forward in my life and actually start to heal. So forgiveness is just letting go of what is no longer serving you. It's an act of self-love and it's saying, hey, you know what? I am this fucking powerful being and it doesn't matter what has happened in my life, I always have the power to say, fuck this, I'm gonna release this shit. I'm not gonna hold on to it any longer. Because choosing to go, oh, no, I'm going to hold on to this grudge. The person that's hurting the most is you. And believe me, do you know what happened when I chose to forgive my father? My whole life started to change. Everything started to change for me. And this is the importance, guys, of finding, like, mentors or coaches or, you know, studying and learning how you can actually move forward. Because... Without these people in my life, without my own coaches and mentors in my life, I would not have been able to been able to move through this. Definitely not at all. It's from their from their advice and their tools and their strategies, their wisdom, their intuition, their knowledge that I've been able to move through this. It it definitely, with all due respect to psychologists, it definitely wasn't from working with them that helped me change my life. All right, so I'm just going to check the chat button. Forgive even if you're not sorry, do it for yourself. Exactly. Yeah. It's not, you don't need someone else to do anything to you. You, you. It's really just to, it's simple, not easy maybe, but it's simple. It's really just making a decision to say, I'm going to let go of this stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. So... <laughs> That's pretty much what I wanted to touch on. Is it? A few other things, but... Yeah. Oh, we can come back to them anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And that's cool. And it's like, you can use that if you want to look at it as like a, a tool. If you want something comes up or whatever, like go straight to forgiveness. It literally covers so much because it's all about you and that's something you can do. And I know... What is... Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> well, forgiveness. And I'll give you a little tool. You can use at the end as well. But... um. In the beginning as well it's really what do i have to learn from this um and understanding that <laughs> you know this is why i integrate a lot of spirituality into my like when i'm working with people and into my teachings it's really about understanding that we are not physical beings having a spiritual experience as wayne dyer said we're spiritual beings having a physical experience right? Everything that's happened in our lives, you know, everything we say, like, yeah, everything that happens in your life is a lesson. It's, it's so much deeper than that, guys. Like, we literally chose everything that was going to happen to us in this lifetime before we were born, before we were reincarnated. So it's really just, what do I have to learn from this? How can this help me evolve into a better human being? Yeah, and that, that touches on, like I say, I, I was going to talk a little bit about Peru and bring more awareness to myself in regards to what you just said with we are physical beings. No, we are spiritual <laughs> beings having a physical, physical experience. experience. And a lot of the stuff we did in Peru was linked into our physical body because we hold on to so much of that and in there. Like what Tanya was mentioning about every time we hold on to something, like it be something that, that we perceive as happening to us, we grip onto it and we're like, we don't want to forgive, we don't want to do this, and we hold on, hold on, hold on. We hold that in our physical body. I'll be there. You leave the comfortable. <laughs> 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 <Talk to them. laughs> I was comfortable. 
And this is this is what we we're saying at the start. We're talking about serious stuff, but we we are very light hearted when we talk about this because we don't want to come in here and go, "This is what you got to do. You got to forgive. You got to do this. You got to do that. Do it now, yeah, otherwise it life's over. Then it's done. We can't laugh. No good." But it, it is. It's can can be serious <laughs> stuff, and we have a laugh about this. And I think it helps. I think with what we've created with our with what we've got going on going forward to bring more lightheartedness to it and getting vulnerable can be scary, but that's, I believe, and I was thinking about this before, that's what we've been conditioned to think. Growing's meant to be uncomfortable. Why? We've been conditioned to think that. It's actually fun and it's easy. What, what's what's more, more fun? Holding on to stuff, hating on people or being scared to forgive or that, holding on and suppressing and whatever else happens from that imploding is or just letting go and surrendering mm. as, as that was a huge lesson of mine in like i say peru no matter how much work i've done with the retreats with the coaching the one-on-one work that at the time i needed that right there and then to just highlight to me that just surrendering surrendering to a process like i say with the coaches a system a program surrender into it trust it and as soon as you do that, instead of just bottling it up and attempting to do it yourself, sometimes we're not aware. We lock stuff in our in our unconscious. Yeah. Like we lock that in there. There's so many layers. And there are <laughs> layers after layers. And, and like I say, I, I, I went to Peru for, for a practical experience to, to really have this shoved in my face. I'm like, you're still holding on to so much. And as soon as I surrendered and stopped battling with myself, then I released and it was like, and what I wanted to mention here was like some of the things with the, with the physical body, especially with me, like I was very, very sick, sore and tired leading into this. And I, I truly believe it was like a really big wake up call sign for me. Like I've got to do something different. I'm holding on to so much from my life right now. I've got to do something different. I learned a lot about where we actually hold on to stuff in our body. Um, and it's pretty cool. I, I am learning a lot about this. I'm going to learn a lot more about this because it, it, it's not just about knowing where it is and having awareness of how to release it. Um, and that was really, really cool. It's Because we can talk about this. There's so much out there. Like you can go and talk about, well, I hold guilt in this part or whatever. I'm going to go, I'll run through them now. I've got notes now. Like anger is the liver. I didn't even know where my liver was. So if I just come here and told you, hey, anger's in your liver. <laughs> So what it is, and this is where cleansing comes into it too. If you want like physical cleansing and anything like that, detox. Mind, body, soul. It's all it's every connected. all connected. And I, I, from my personal opinion, there's a lot out there that they talk about mind and body and soul. They don't interlink all this stuff on a deeper level. They absolutely don't. And it's, it's what I'm really passionate about now and because of my own experiences with it, not just in Peru, but leading into Peru where things weren't going right. And that's where I started asking questions. Like I say, anger in the liver, sadness in the lungs. Something powerful is breathing, breathing exercises. We're going to touch a little bit more on what we've brought into something later on, on breathing. Um, it is powerful. I've, I've actually changed one of my routines to include this. And it's sadness in the lungs. Something across my journey, which actually took a mentor of mine um, on a one-on-one call to really highlight to me. And that gave me a massive breakthrough. Fear is in the kidneys. Now, we've all got fear, guys. Everyone holds on to it. Whatever it is, we heard many at the Tony Robbins thing. And like Tony said, it's like, you're not the only one with that fear. You're not the only one with that problem. Everyone's got the same thing. So why are you holding on to it so tight and worried about what other people think? Yeah. It was like, it was something crazy. Like um, 90% or 95% of the room raised their hand fearful about money or lack of money or something yeah Mm. so you're you're holding that like i say in organs of the body um and you can hold that on for a lifetime most people do you wonder why there's so much sickness and everything in the world and you get medication and you touched on medicating when there's like depression and things like that it's the same sort of thing it doesn't get to the root cause your soul and your your mind has an effect on your physical body so asking you guys a question here you know like for example have you ever had You've been thinking about something really stressful, like, oh, fuck, like I work so stressful right now. Oh, fuck, I'm not going to have enough money to pay my bills at the end of the month. And you keep thinking that over and over and over again, you're probably going to get tension, right? Physical tension in your upper back. 
or what's common if you're worried about money it's going to be in your lower back um this tension so people don't really understand like the how much your your thoughts your psychology and your like what's happening within your soul your energy body in other words is affecting your physical health it's not just nutrition and exercise that impacts your physical health no that's a good point and like i say with me and that was a big point for me like i love my training my gym and all that but it was not doing it i was actually struggling a lot and it was because of a lot of this and i truly believe a lot of the release work that i've done around what's linked into the organs and the body was that like you can train and feel good but if you hold on to anything else on an emotional level deep level it doesn't matter what training you do because what are you doing you're still suppressing it that's why there's there's so many different ways to to get to the root cause of this and release it's like um another example of that is um women who are super in their masculine will be put on like hold weight right to be stocky yeah yeah. yeah there's there's so many Example. so many yeah. examples of this guys like we we hold on to fat tissues and we store bad energy and then that's why we we hold on to the fat that's simple as that like with bad self-talk um anything like that like i say it's there's so much that is linked into our physical body mm. and, and we can control it just don't this might sound like oh no i've got all this locked in my body you can control it you can so control it feeling reconditioning yeah yeah and like guided anything guided to to take maybe some conscious control away from yourself it's all really important and like you've mentioned we've both worked with mentors along the way they've been fantastic at the time and served their purpose and we continue to work with mentors going forward because of this yeah. take that control away from protecting ourselves never yeah. never have a coach who doesn't have a coach Mm. that was something we heard from who said that at the event scott harris scott harris who's been working with the likes of tony robbins and etc 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 absolutely charges what is it now a million a million dollars us for coaching, for coaching. <laughs> aussie dude never heard of him before and he was phenomenal yeah mm. he's amazing i'm just gonna touch on the last couple here hurt is in the solar plexus so here i've done a lot of work around that um and guilt your solar plexus Oh, I, I had to. I have to stand up and look at my chair. It's in here. There you go. <laughs> it's your third chakra. It is, yeah. yeah. And this all links into the chakras too. I'm just giving, without going into detail, what the chakras are and everything, because I think that's a whole different training or three, or five. <laughs> but I think the organs um, are easier to to sort of relate to. Um, the last one, guilt. This has been huge for me recently, like massive. Now. Tanya talked about a lot of her a past from when she was young and there was a lot of guilt and I remember us working on a lot of that with you um, through the one-on-one -on -one stuff. With me, um, with guilt, it's something that I was aware of but I didn't think it was affecting me but it's been huge and that's the lower intestine. What's the shark of that? No, where is the lower intestine? Down there, isn't it? It's the sacral shark. Yeah, sacral shark. <laughs> the lower intestine is. That's in my right. stomach. <laughs> so we'll just just check the comments. Check the comments, okay? yeah. My phone died. I don't know. What oh, thanks, means. Belle. You're both awesome, positive people here and it's precious. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Super cool. Any questions too? Just still type them in the box. I know we said hold off to the end, but we will get to them. Any questions while we're covering a lot of ground here, please don't hesitate to ask at all. Um if we know the answer, we'll ask we answer, but um yeah. But yeah, like I say, knowing that you can actually work on this stuff, knowing that you can release all this stuff and knowing that there is, say, light at the end of the tunnel is really, really important. So many people don't want to do any work because they're afraid they're not going to release it. They're going to afraid that they've been holding on for so long. There's no way away from it. And you just got to know, you got to have that full belief. And I'll go back to it before. With us, we trusted processes. We trusted other people who have, who have been through a lot of this similar stuff. It doesn't have to be the same but it can be similar and they've got the knowledge they've got the tools and strategies if you will they've, they've got stuff that's really in the end of the day simple if you just like apply it, apply it and and listen for a start a lot of us don't listen i believe is because we we've got no knowing that it's going to work well like, oh, i've tried this and i've tried that but you've tried it all yourself you've protected yourself one of the responsibilities of the unconscious mind is actually to protect itself so in essence and when you get to a point, it's a responsibility to keep yourself safe. And it's a cool way of having someone who's been through it to go to. 
to say, well, I, I know there's something in this, but I'm afraid or, oh, I don't think it's going to work. And they, they, they will push you yeah. for good because reason. If you're left, this is the thing. Like, and this is why we have accountability in our, like, in our courses and programs and stuff. If you're left to your own devices, usually you're always going to do what's comfortable, right? And what's comfortable, it means that you're not growing, right? It's good sometimes, but it ultimately means that you're not growing. And that's the whole point of this life here. And it's also growth and contribution. That's what makes you fulfilled. So, yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah, and... That's all- what Tony Robbins said. Don't believe us, believe Tony Robbins. <laughs> I think we're going to refer to a lot more people like that too because I think, and we've touched on a couple of things that um, we, we really want to make difference to any program or anything that we've been in or we've done or we're saying. We're going to give like other people who have been doing this for many, many years who've got the credibility that a lot of you guys know what they go on about too. It's not just us in here saying, yeah, we've done this in our life and we're all better. Listen to us. This is, this is so many people who have got success, if you will, Mm. that are living that life that I know we are striving to live. Um, and I know a lot of you guys, if you're on here and you resonate with, is, there's definitely something in it for you. So mm. we're, just, we're just using our own results as an example because we have overcome a lot of the stuff and we, have, we are living pretty cool lives now. Um, but then also, you know, the, the way that we've gotten here is from drawing upon all of these incredible different mentors and coaches and yeah. spirit, for me, a lot yeah. of spiritual teachers. Um, and that's helped us to get to where we are now. So I just, yeah, that's one thing I don't like it when people are like, it's all me and this is all my knowledge. It's like, well, you can, it's fine to quote other people, stay humble, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no weird. one just makes the stuff up. Um, I've got a really similar story. Ah, that's so, <laughs> thank you so much, Joey. That's really uh, cool. Awesome, awesome. Yes, definitely resonate with me. Beautiful. And that's what it's about, like having having that knowing that you guys are going to show up and it's going to resonate. We're not going to change what we believe in and what we've learned for the people, you guys who are on it. So, oh, they might want this, they might want that. We know a lot of people are going to gain so much value from what we're teaching from our own experience, we're just going to keep rolling with it because yeah. it's super cool. <laughs> That's, it is. It's really, really cool. It's given us many breakthroughs and many more. Um, I talked about knowing a bit too. Um, another lesson of mine, um, doing a lot of work, I was getting to a point like, oh, it can't be anymore. I'm fine. I'm fine. That little ego voice taking over and it did take me to, to get away from my environment up here get away from her nah <laughs> but to get away from this and not the fact that i was in peru to be taken away change the environment separate myself from the situation i was in here at home um and have a look from the outside have a look at my life and say well actually i've got a lot more growth i've got to do i've got a lot more work i've got to do on a personal level um and just it happened the timing it was when i went to peru and it was really really highlighted over there like times I was there and I'm like I'm holding myself back by telling myself that well no I've done this if it's not working now it's okay I'm at a point where it's okay um and I know since I've come back I'm like no I'm going harder on this stuff because there's a lot more and it actually feels better to know that there's a lot more yeah and that's the thing eh? and you know what like to be completely honest over the past three months um You know, I've only recently started with a a one-on-one mentor again, but I had about a three-month break where I wasn't working with a a one-on-one mentor coach. And um, a lot of things were changing for me because I had changed from one mentor to another. And actually, my one of my old mentors I really wasn't resonating with, and it was because I had shifted a lot. But I remember, like, because in that time, I um. I wasn't in as much momentum. I wasn't in as much flow during those three months that I didn't have a one-on-one mentor. And, you know, I remember at um, at the event a couple of days ago, we were looking at, you know, like, what is the vision for your life? What is it that you want? What is it that holds you back? And I was like, I've been holding myself back. (laughs) That's how she did it too. (laughs) I actually cried in front of all of them. Um, <laughs> I cry there too. And everyone cried. Right? <laughs> people make, but, but um, 
and I felt bad, but I felt guilty. I was like, you know, I've just been holding myself back and I've been self-sabotaging and stuff. But <laughs> that's the thing. Like, that is why some of the people we saw speak have fucking built like $19 million businesses. Like, mm. They're so ridiculously successful and they've got a family and they're happy and fulfilled, right? So it's not just about the money. They're, they're pretty fucking sorted in life, right? And those people still have coaches and mentors. Exactly, That's the yeah. thing. It's just a natural part of us is that we, as I said before, you're always going to stay comfortable, you know, and you're all, because we all have these blind spots as well. Sorry, as well. And though that's why you need someone who's always going to push, just push you a little bit and say, hey, you know, this is kind of what you need to be doing or, hey, like maybe this is why you've been feeling like this and we need to go and work on, on this, right? So, yeah. So. It's, I, it's not about being like weak, or like, oh, I'm, I suck, I need a coach. Like, no. It's nah. Successful people have coaches. Exactly. Awesome people have coaches. They do. <laughs> I do, do that, that all the time. time. What do you mean, hold yourself back? Well, exactly. We all do. Instead of saying, <laughs> oh, boo boo, I've been holding myself back, beat myself up more, fucking do something about it. Get a coach or a mentor, jump in some kind of program. Do something that's going to move Do something that scares you. It might be trusting someone else. <laughs> it might be. Yeah. It is for a lot of people. It's especially trusting a process you haven't done before. That's that's where you're going to get the growth. That's where you're going to get to move forward and get away from the thoughts or the feelings where you have, where you're like, oh, I am holding myself back. And as soon as you say, I'm holding myself back, I'm holding myself back, guess what? You're going to keep holding yourself back. It's, <laughs> it's like anything. Have no fear. So true about the bones. Oh, awesome yeah. that you're and on, Kieran. Yeah. Cool. There's some hey, cool people yeah. on here. Yeah, awesome. Show you guys. And you know, it's not even about yeah. having like no fear. I don't think, I think even the most successful people in the world, you know. That's how fear. you use fear. It's about fear. It's about dancing with the fear. Mm. And it's about, yeah, learning how to make fear your friend rather than your enemy. And that's like one of the awesome things that we've been able to, to learn from our coaches and mentors. What else do you want to share about Peru? About Peru. I've got so much to share um, and there's no, I was thinking about coming into this, oh, I'm going to share this, I'm going to share that because so much of it was critical what anyone can take from it. I think without being in Peru, what I wanted to highlight is you don't need to take yourself away. You don't need to go all the way across the other side of the world to work on yourself. If you feel called, yeah, like I was, it was definitely something that called me. But a lot of the stuff that I learned while I was away was stuff that I just needed to separate myself from the situation and it was highlighted to me. It just came up. It was as simple as that. And a lot of us in this day-to-day life, we've got so much going on, we don't give ourselves a chance to separate ourselves from the situation and look back in on what's going on. I was like, how can I do this better? Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to That's why I was talking <laughs> about it. I but I'm going to keep rolling for a minute. I'll let you talk about it. But this is going to go a little bit longer than our two guys. And it's like really cool because we're, we're in flow here, which is awesome. Um, happens too much when we work together. Something in that, hey. <laughs> but yeah, I think that was something to think about if you're looking in your own circumstances and that. Don't think because you see someone like myself or whatever traveling around the world, going to do these things in the jungle or whatever, that it has to be you before you get a breakthrough. It's absolutely not the case. I've had breakthroughs like sitting in my car where I've had a moment and something comes up and I just allow it to come up. That's that's what it is. And I know even like the last couple of days while I've been in Sydney, I've had stuff come up that I haven't felt comfortable with. I haven't prompted it. I haven't done it, but I've been aware of it. I've taken notice of it. I'm like, oh, wow, why does that come up? This is what you can do day to day, guys. Something comes up. Don't get angry with it or whatever. It's like, oh, why does this keep coming up? There's something wrong with me or this person keeps affecting me or shit keeps showing up, just be aware of it and just say, all right, here it is. Why is it coming up? And then what can I do about it? If I don't know what to do about it, go to someone like we've talked about who may be able to help, not one of your family members or one of your mates or one of your friends. Usually someone it's someone... Someone with an outsider's perspective. Exactly. I've talked about me separating myself and looking back and I've, I've done a lot, lot of work to be able to do that and still I've got to do a lot of work because there's times where I'm glad she's around sometimes where she points things out to me where it might frustrate me but she's an outsider looking in so you can actually handle this a little bit better or didn't you notice how you were with that 
I appreciate it, even if I don't show it at the time. <laughs> you know, I mentioned that earlier for a reason. I was hoping she'd be out for that. But okay. <laughs> But the same with you, true? It's like, yeah. it's not us calling each other on our shit either. It's, it is in a way, but we're very careful about that. And we've spoken about that too. Yeah. But we trust each other. We've got amazing trust between each other. And that's something that's built up over time. I know if... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a year over time. And like I say, I, I don't know, any more from Peru. I'd love to take some questions on Peru. It was a very, very personal experience. I even like wandered around in the nude. That's way out of my comfort zone. <laughs> that, that was, I don't know what the fuck I learned from that. <laughs> it's out of my comfort zone. <laughs> it was. And it was wow. like, having like, we did a cactus bath and all this sort of stuff. Seeing other guys wandering around in the nude. <laughs> First day, I'm like, what the fuck have I got myself into? <laughs> but it's for a reason. It's like, why? Why have insecurities? Like, and that's what it is. It's, it's my own, just highlighting things. Like, why am I insecure? It's, um, yeah. so I looked at it, and of course, we've, like with me, image is really important. I'm like, holy shit, I've never done this before. Are they going to look at me and they're going to judge me? <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> it was freezing. I've been eaten alive by mosquitoes. I didn't want them to bite me in certain places and I'd be walking around scratching all the time. Why do you care what other women think about the size of your penis? There was men walking around. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and other women. <laughs> oh, what happens in Peru is meant to stay in Peru. <laughs> It's been let out. Oh, I crack myself. <laughs> you do. That was that just reminds me of <laughs> everyone was in the event, like two thousand people with their eyes closed. <laughs> do you remember what Mal said out loud to oh. Alvi? We had a our good friends <laughs> Malvi, we called them, Mal and Alvi, were sitting next to us and um and Tony Robbins was guiding us through this like just this guided like process where we had to close our eyes and he's like, Imagine <laughs> it's like imagine a sexy moment where you just felt so passionate, so alive. And then like everyone's like quiet, dead silent with their eyes closed. And then Mal's just like, you better be thinking about me, Alvi. And like <laughs> Alvi. <laughs> and everyone um, around her just cracked up laughing. Like, <laughs> yeah, very, very funny. Just had to shit it, so it popped into my brain. <laughs> yeah, my nudity comments like brought that up on like, I know what's going on in her head now. <laughs> it's um, funny. I'm just thinking of anything else from Peru. Like I say, I'd love to get questions. It's easier for me to answer anything in Peru. Well, the subject, questions. Yeah. the subject that you were just talking about. So that was something that I was wanting to chat on is, but just kind of using different words, you know, in other words. So, because everyone resonates and understands different words better. You know, another way of looking at that is, um, because there are so many ways. And so what Steve just talked about, about separating yourself from the situation. So Tony Robbins was actually talking about that at the event. And then that morning, <laughs> before we went to the event, on the way we were listening to Wayne Dyer in the car. He's one of my favorite spiritual teachers, um, mentors. And so what he was talking about is with that separation, it's really like looking at, we have, our, we have two selves. So it's like that constant stream of thoughts in your head that things like your worries and, you know, I am how much money I earn and I am my marital status, you know, I am my name, I am my job, I am all of these things and just all of these thoughts that constantly go around in our heads. This is our, our ego selves, right? This is our ego. And then we also have our higher self. And so what we can do, and that's an actual, this is an, a technique, like Steve said, is a lot of the time, and ask yourself this, does that voice actually serve you? Like a lot of what, what is going through your mind, a lot of the time, is it actually making you feel happy or is it making you feel miserable? Because like one of the things he, Tony Robbins said as well, we will be quoting him a lot, is like... I'm going to have to send him some money after this one. <laughs> <laughs> This is one of the amazing things about human beings. We're the only beings on the planet is we can make a thought and make ourselves miserable and we can make, think a thought and make ourselves euphoric, right? And that's amazing. But it's really about separating ourselves and realizing, okay, we are the ones thinking our thoughts and not becoming stuck and, so, and, and identifying ourselves with that ego self and that constant stream of thoughts because that is not you. 
who you are is your higher self. It's your your soul, right? And so when you have all these this crazy shit going through your mind, like fuck, I'm stressed out, and like I don't know, what's some other crazy shit we think? I don't have any. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's anything. Yeah, like, I've eaten a donut today. Damn it, I'm off my diet. Or fuck, this traffic is pissing me off. Or oh yeah, that's mine. Uh, <laughs> What are these other people thinking of me right now? Do I look cool enough? All of this stuff that goes through our mind that can actually just cause cause ourselves a lot of actual, really just suffering. We cause yeah. ourselves a lot of suffering. If we can actually take a moment and step back and visualize yourself as okay, I am I'm my higher self. Like this is me, and imagine yourself looking in on your ego self and thinking ah huh. just watching watching your ego self with love and with compassion and just watching like the the need for them to always be for that person to or for your mind to constantly be doing what it's doing or thinking like that and it's simple it's just because you've been conditioned that way really um and because fear is a big one as well yeah. It's always your mind is being it's trained. It's like your two million year old brain is trained to find what's wrong because that's how it keeps you safe. So that's why we always we always look for what's wrong. So when you can look for what's right and take a step back and just observe yourself with love and compassion, then you can actually start to do, dissolve those those thoughts a bit more and, and have more control over them. So just type through yes if that makes sense. Yes, yes. <laughs> if we're making sense, type through yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So true about the blind spots. It's hard to see things when you are too close to it. Ah, oh, thank you, yeah. Erin. Exactly. And it's like... She has cool energy too. I have to throw that straight back. <laughs> yeah, you do, Karen. Are you talking about me or Karen? Both. She's got, a, she's got <laughs> okay energy. It's okay. It's like, um, you know, one of my favorite things to do is this is like my favorite form of exercise. You're allowed to share this? Apart from dancing. <laughs> <laughs> is, walking, is walking up hills. And do you know why? I love sitting on top of a hill and looking out over everything. And it's for that exact reason. Is because it gives me a chance to just separate myself from everything that's going on down there and just have a clear mind. And just be the observer. Just be the observer of, what, of what's going on. Because you can never, when you're stuck in that state, right, in that egoic way of thinking, you're, you are stuck. Like, you can't think your way out of it. <laughs> mm. You can either, like, Tony, like, you can either change your state, you can do certain things, but you cannot think your way out of it. So. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 now we have we have covered a lot tonight and we've dropping little bits and pieces in there. Hopefully you've picked up on a lot of it, but a lot of this stuff we're talking about, um, we have combined into our I Week program, a lot of it. I've brought back a lot of cool stuff from Peru to go in with what we've already learned. Um, a lot of the trainings we, we already knew, we've, we've taken them to another level from this, from this stuff and we've interlinked, we've touched on the chakras touched on the breathing we've got beth coming into the eight week program yeah. which is amazing so our yoga instructor who's like super super cool really cool energy amazing um she's going to be doing like a bonus training in there on breathing techniques yeah and that's oh, so important it's so important like i say a lot of the stuff that i've Can't learned your mind. <laughs> a lot of the stuff i've learned can interlink in with that perfect it's, it's something that i didn't know before when we set this eight week program up i'm gonna we're going to add that in too um yeah. because of how we've learned how critical it is with the whole the whole release not just releasing of the thoughts you hold on to and everything the whole deep underlying subconscious stuff locked into your body that's that's the purpose of this it's it really is yeah going like clear healing through all the layers healing right deep down to the soul level like really deep so we're really, really excited to, about this because, like, fuck, we've been on. <laughs> That's it, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> because we've been we've been learning about this stuff for a long time, and like, 
for me, I can't speak for you too, but personally, for me, you know, I've been learning about this stuff for a few years now. And this is really me coming to a place where I feel like, you know what, I have so much. I just want to take everything that I've learned over my journey of growth and self development and healing and overcoming all of the greatest challenges of, of my life and just putting it into this course for for you guys or for anyone who is jumping in because I wish I had have found something like this earlier like that's the only thing I mean everything panned out perfectly in my life but it would have been pretty fucking cool if I'd found this earlier rather than being labeled as depressed and being labeled with all this bullshit and being told that I need to go on to, on medication and going to you know paying hundreds and hundreds and thousands of dollars to psychologists and all these different things like this stuff is is pretty fucking cool yeah i'm i'm glad it didn't she didn't find it earlier because we wouldn't be sitting here now exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah. no but i'm the same and a, a lot of that, a lot of this this work i do i was questioning myself even when i started and i got into it I'm like i want to contribute but the only way i can contribute is to to teach and to teach i've got to learn more and i've gone on this personal growth journey and like we've, we've interlinked a lot of our stuff now which is taking another level so in, i can enable to teach more and to help more people realize that there's so much power in doing the work yeah that's there's so much even that word work people are put off by but it's it's fun it is if it you do it can right be people. if you do it with the right people <laughs> It's been a big thing for us. It's like we've done so much serious work. There's been a lot of emotions, a lot of tears, which is okay too. That can be fun too. Yeah. Yeah, but there's also a fun way to do this. Yeah. And it's, it really is simple. Like it all starts with you making a decision like, fuck, I want to change my life. I want to improve my life. And I, I'm willing to do what it takes. Then all you need to do is find someone who has the results that you want and listen to them. Exactly. So if you want to be cool and fun like us two, <laughs> well, like me, um, <laughs> no, this is definitely something for you. It definitely is. Like I say, we've got two parts to it. One-on-one -on -one stuff with us. We've mentioned tonight how there's so many different um, different ways you can go through this. You can go through the process and do the work. It'd be one-on-one -on -one with me. I'm being too cheeky now. You might have to take over in a sec. Or the trainings we do, like I say, where we interlink a lot of this, we give you tools and strategies and processes and routines, um, everything which is structured to be able to give you continual release work and breakthroughs, not just come onto a training and say, oh, I had a release, I'm done. This is for continual um, reconditioning. So it's exactly, so it's eight weeks and what Steve is saying, so you're going to have some fucking phenomenal transformation throughout those eight weeks. But not only that, it's going to continue after because everything that we deliver in the trainings, you're going to have the, the recordings for life. Exactly. Um, and I, like, when I remember a course that I did like back in March last year. Um, the recordings of that I was listening to for months and months after. Um, so you can just, you can use them over and over again. So the way that it works, so adding on to what Steve said, so we've got the gold and the platinum. So it's an eight week course. So with gold, you get the eight weekly trainings, <laughs> packing together everything that Steve and I know, like we're, we're not holding back anything. We're literally just pouring everything yeah. in because we talked about this and we're like, we want to help people. You know, we want to shortcut this and make it just easy and fun and as fast and get rapid results as possible. Um, so the eight weekly trainings jam packed with amazing content. Um, and then we've also got weekly live Q and A's. So we've got the trainings and then we've also got the live Q and A. So that's literally, we'll be, we'll be in a private Facebook group. Um, and we'll be live streaming into that Facebook group once per week. And the purpose of that is to make sure that there is no one who at any point throughout those eight weeks doesn't know what, what's going on and what they need to do. So we'll, it's a progress check-in. How are you guys doing? What do you need help with? Ask us any questions. We're giving you guys everything, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. And with the private Facebook group, you got the accountability, which is key, I think, in all this stuff we are teaching and you will be learning because, like I say, 
you got to apply it over and over. You got to show up every day. Repetition is the mother's. It is, and it, you got to you got to recondition this. And we talk a lot about old conditioning, but this is about the new conditioning, and um, it's really really important. It's a big reason why we've structured it for eight weeks as well, um, to really to really give you something. Con- to continue on with yeah, and ingrain the stuff within you right yeah. it's just like if you want to get a fit body you don't fucking go to the gym for one or two days you got to keep going on a regular basis right yeah. and with this we have daily accountability that means every single day you guys are going to be showing up the right people that we accept into the group yeah. you guys are going to be showing up because that is what's going to get you the, the lasting results Super cool. What platinum. else? Platinum, platinum, platinum. What else is there? <laughs> so, so that's the gold, right? So you get all of that. And then for platinums, you get everything that's included in the gold. And you also get four private one-on-one calls um, with Steve or myself. And they're my specialty, by the way. That's what I'm absolutely super passionate about is the one-on-one stuff. I love the rest of it, but I know with my journey and everything, the people I've worked with, that's where I know I the more personal stuff is is key for, for this. And that's what I'm excited for you guys about, is being able to have that opportunity to, to be able to work on a one-on-one level. Having a one-on-one coach that just can give you specifically exactly what you need, really, really powerful. Um, and for me, if people are going to be jumping on calls with me, I'm really very in tune with I'm going to be tapping into your energy and really see like what are you holding within your within your energy body and within your system so in terms of like grief like resentment anger um these things where did they come from like in your childhood um I just want to tap into that and dig really deep and help you heal and shift through that and release that stuff that you've been holding on to for a long time that's what I'm really passionate about. That's why I call myself an intuitive life coach and a healer. Yeah. Cool. There's so much more in it too. We just can't talk about uh, it. Uh, See? He's not a detailed person. But <laughs> Meta report. <laughs> for those we, of you who did our training on that. For those of you who did our workshop, you know what the meta report is. So the last thing with the platinum guys, last but not least, not only do you get those four private one-on-one calls, Throughout the eight weeks, you're going to have private access to, to either Steve or myself via Facebook Messenger or email. Business hours. So business hours access. So, like, that means you have us. Like, those eight weeks, you're going to be working very closely with us to, to overcome whatever it is you need to overcome and start looking at where is it you want to be going in your life and how can we get you there. Pretty simple. It is pretty simple. Like I say, it's all about you guys getting the results. And doing the work. And doing the work. We can give you a treadmill, but if you don't run on the treadmill, you ain't going to get a nice butt. That's for girls. You're going to get nice abs if you're going. <laughs> Maybe I should get a treadmill. I want a nice butt. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> all right, just checking. Sounds amazing. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so we're very excited. So we're actually Tui. Is already enrolled. Two is already. We, we have we already have a few people enrolled, which is absolutely amazing. Yeah, and we only have limited spots for the platinum guys. So and they're already filling up those spots. They are. So because obviously we can only work with a limited amount of people one on one. Otherwise we go a bit crazy because we want to give as much as possible. Yeah. And we need to maintain balance. So there's only ten platinum spots available. There's not All now. Right. There's only like half that left now. But that's how oh, many yeah. we're working with. Yeah. In total, there's two, yeah. is what I mean. Cool. Yeah, but yeah, they're already been getting filled up now. So, um, you guys are amazing. Yeah, I'm so excited for you too. This is going to be awesome. I stayed in early out of ego for the past five months, so fuck oh, it. I'm awesome. Next month, Belinda, you yes. You guys are opening my eyes. Awesome. Looking forward to having you in there, Belinda. Awesome. Sounds amazing, guys. Can't wait. I want to do platinum on Monday. Yes. Awesome. That's that so cool, super, Belinda. Super cool, I'm really cool. excited for you. This will be so cool. All right, guys, type through type through any other questions yeah. like you have about this, um, and we'll answer them before we jump off. Yeah, we've done pretty well. Sticking to we, our time schedule. Yeah, we have How actually. Many two minutes every time. We started a little bit late. Like he talks too much. <laughs> I'll take that on board. That's okay. 
Yay. If I, if I knew that I talked too much, I would have taken that personally, but no, I haven't spoken that much tonight. Bell said, yay, excited. Cool. No Everyone questions. should be excited. People just excited. No. <laughs> like I say, any questions afterwards, if you don't want to put them on here, send us an inbox. Um, yeah. So, so first training is this Monday, the 22nd. So the cutoff is like midday, um, midday this Monday, the 22nd of May. Question, I know I got a goal, but it would be eight weeks if you drive. It would be if I drive to Cairns. Can we, yes, we can. To it, we can chat about that for sure. Yeah, we'll chat about that. It will be cool to meet you in person. It will be, yeah. You like to She's got really, really cool energy. And I know she's going to do the work. Yeah, she's doing it on the treadmill. But yeah, like I say, yeah. We're going to give you guys the treadmill. That's what I'm, that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say in all my training. Maybe I've got to get on some of your trainings then. Or get you a treadmill and then... <laughs> um, then... <laughs> That's a key so, one. yeah, like I say, inboxes for the link for any more information on the course. Like yeah. I say... Um, it starts Monday. It starts Monday. Which is in two days. Yeah, sort of. It's Friday. Two days. We'll say... It's Friday Tuesday. today. Daylight days plus Monday. Yeah. <laughs> Two daylight days. Yes, but get in, like I say, um, we are also doing 15-minute power calls, breakthrough calls. If you're not in our harmony, behind the scenes of Harmonious Balance group, let us know. You can jump we'll in Jump there. in there, yeah. even though it is getting a, um, it's evolving come Monday um, when the course starts, but that's definitely something to jump into there. And I don't know, I'm just like thinking off the top of my head. That's everything. Like everything. I gave all the details. You did because you were amazing. I know. Now I knew so. <laughs> cool. You want to wrap it up there? Yeah. No more questions. Wait, we got a Q and A box on. Ooh, this is amazing. I never knew. Ah, yeah, that is really, really cool, Cal. About your organs. I, oh, yeah. I had an idea, like I say, with a lot of this stuff, and you're probably sitting there too. It doesn't matter about what we've talked about here. A lot of the stuff you hear in. Um, personal development, reading books or whatever, you always got to ask more questions. Or if you don't fully understand it, do some more research or ask people who've mentioned it all night. Go to someone if you, if you think there's something in it, you get a feeling, you're like, oh, wow, that's cool. I want to learn more about it. Follow through with that feeling. Follow through for that. that that's intuition talking. Yeah. Like anything that pops up that you're like, wow, well, I want to know more, like, just ask the questions. It's Yeah. Like a lot of people talk about, if you guys are familiar with like Louise Hay, Wayne Dyer, Tony Robbins even mentioned it the other day as well. Like disease mm. is caused by dis-ease within the body. So any thoughts or thinking or any like toxicity that you're holding on to, um, like in forms of bitterness, resentment, anger, etc. Um, all, I forgot where I was going with it. Oh yeah, all <laughs> disease. All that it, exactly. It's um. People think, oh, it's just in my, it's just in my brain. I'm just thinking that I can't see that, or I'm just feeling that. It it anything that causes disease within you, if you hold on to that for year after year after year after year, it becomes disease within your body. So like, yeah, there's some there's some. I've read a lot of really cool, like amazing stories about it. Like I know Louise Hay, who was who was molested when she was very young by a neighbor, and she held on to that resentment most of her life. Did a lot of healing work, but then when she got to her forties, she realized she actually developed cancer down there, and she realized that she had hold on, she had been holding on to that resentment and that rage, that anger for that whole time, and she went on this hardcore like healing herself and digging deep into that like a full makeover like her diet and everything as well um but she actually healed herself from that cancer within six months so yeah it's, yeah I, and there's I, so many of those stories so many of stories and like i say in peru especially working with the the grandmas doing the shamanic work and the alchemy work and all that the stories they had of people the same thing and they said it's all about what you hold on to, what you choose to hold on to, your thoughts, yeah. what you focus on. It does. It expands. It it's really like, does. It's, it's like even when you see people like go through, like go through this journey. Like we have so many people who are in self development, or even people that we have worked with, even ourselves. 
you see how that their physical appearance starts to change when they start becoming healthier, like psychologically and spiritually. Yeah. I'll say it, say it on the retreats. I look back on mine. People look different. Oh my goodness. It's, it's when you amazing. release something, the physical difference that you see is crazy. It really is. Like I say, working on the retreats last year where there was a lot of, a lot of men going through having big breakthroughs. It's the same thing. Even like I say, like with ourselves, apart from me in Sydney, apparently I look like, what did you say? I'm not even going to mention oh, that. Oh, that's mean, does it? He looked like a gaunt old man. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm just going to share something. I don't care for the recording. See what she does when she says something really, really mean or is going to mean? She drives and goes, but it's okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> But it's true. Oh. It is true. You do you do the personal work. It's got such. It has such a dramatic effect on physical Everything. appearance. And guess Everything what, guys? The way we're conditioned, we all give a, a massive fuck about our physical appearance. So yeah. if, there, if there's another another incentive for you to do a lot more personal work, I it think, makes you look hotter. <laughs> it actually does that. Yeah. You know, all right. You must have I done mean, a lot of personal work. <laughs> I told him he should make a YouTube channel on how to make dad jokes when you're not a dad. That's a good idea. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm going to hug him now because he said something mean. That's true. <laughs> anyway, guys. Oh, what an end to this <laughs> webinar. See, we, 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 don't, uh, we don't put this stuff on, guys. Oh. Like, all of it, we don't. We're pretty transparent. Eh? We are so transparent. We're not, we're not down ridiculous. with putting up the sides. None nah, of that bullshit. None of it at all. And that's what we want to bring to you <laughs> none guys. None of it at all. That's <laughs> just, 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 just. <laughs> I hope you put so good. Honestly, it's okay. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's important. And I think that's a great way to finish this. Mate, uh, to <laughs> Well, you're going to love this eight-week course. <laughs> I I do my best to control it, but... You should get the one-on-one -on -one course with Steve. Oh, <laughs> wow. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for jumping on. Like I say, we just keep it real. We we have a little bit of structure, but we, we just... We just flow and um, we just, this is just part of what we, we feel called to do. Yeah. So thank you guys for valuing our time and valuing your own time, especially. Appreciate it a lot. Yeah, thank you guys so much. And we'll see you guys soon. Absolutely. Love you guys. Well. <laughs> she hasn't needed to know, she's I'm laughing her ass off. <laughs> All right. I'm done. See you guys soon. And bye so bye. excited. Congrats to everyone who's, who's already in already and whoever isn't, see you in there. <laughs>